How can we measure the value of the resistance using a Wheatstone's bridge? My name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So let me ask you guys the obvious question again. How can we measure the value of the resistance using a Wheatstone's bridge? Well, well, let's find out. So, a Wheatstone's bridge is a kind of a bridge-like structure that is made up of four resistors. So, with the help of this structure, which is referred to as Wheatstone's bridge, we can actually measure the value of an unknown resistance. For that, let us take, say, a voltage source, say, like this. Let us take a voltage source like this. Let the voltage be, say, V. Now, let us connect this voltage to a particular bridge-like structure like this. This has got four resistances like this. This has got four resistances, R1, R2, R3 and R4. And then it is connected back over here. So, this is what you refer to as a Wheatstone's bridge. And here we connect a galvanometer like this. So this is the basic structure of what you refer to as a Wheatstone's bridge. But now, how do we use this Wheatstone's bridge to calculate the value of an unknown resistance? Well, it is very simple. So here we have four resistances. Let this be say R1. Let this be say R2. And let this be say R3. And let this be say R4. Now let us imagine that R4 is the unknown resistance. That is we have to find the value of R4 over here. So for that what we do is this R2 is replaced by a variable resistor. So a variable resistor is a resistor whose value of resistance can be changed. We can actually change the value of this resistance like a rheostat. So now what we do is that as we change the value of this particular resistance, a certain deflection is obtained over here in the galvanometer. That is, we obtain some kind of a deflection in the galvanometer. But at a particular point, when we set the resistance value to a particular point, we observe that there is no deflection here. That is, there is no flow of current across this galvanometer. So, we obtain such kind of a condition and such kind of a condition is referred to as a balanced condition. So, therefore, in a balanced condition, there is no deflection in this particular galvanometer. This means that there is no kind of current flowing through this particular galvanometer. This means that the potential difference across this particular galvanometer is zero. So therefore, if the current that is passing through this is say I1, the same current will be passing through here, I1, in the balanced condition because there is no current passing through the galvanometer. And if this is say I2, the current passing through R4 is also I2. So therefore, in balanced condition, what we saw was that the potential difference between these two ends is equal to 0. That is, the potential difference at this point is given as I1 into R1. So therefore, I1 into R1 minus the potential at here is given as I2 into R3. That is, I2 into R3 is equal to 0. So this implies that I1 R1 is equal to I2 R3. Taking I2 R3 towards here. So I1 R1 is equal to I2 R3. So now here, since this is in the balanced condition, there is no current flowing through here. So therefore, these two branches can be treated as two parallel branches like this. That is, R3 and R4 is one parallel branch and R1 and R2 is one parallel branch. And therefore, the current I1 that is passing through here can be given as I1 is equal to this particular potential across these two ends, which is V. That is, V divided by total resistance R1 plus R2. And similarly, the value of current I2 can be obtained as the potential difference across this particular bridge that is V divided by the total resistance which is R3 plus R4. Therefore, I2 is equal to 
V divided by R3 plus R4. And now substituting the value of I1 and I2 onto this particular equation, we get V divided by R1 plus R2 into R1 is equal to V divided by R3 plus R4 into R3. Here V and V gets cancelled and upon cross multiplication we get R1 into R3 plus R4 is equal to R3 into R1 plus R2. On expanding this R1 R3 plus R1 R4 is equal to R3 R1 plus R3 R2. So here R1 R3 R1 R3 gets cancelled. So what this deduces is that R1 R4 is equal to R3 R2. So here R4 is the value of the unknown resistance that is we have to find the value of R4. So therefore the value of R4 from here is given as R4 is equal to R3 R2 divided by R1. This is the value of the unknown resistance R4 as simple as that. So the easy way over here is that in the balance condition what we observe here is that the ratio of these two resistances are equal. That is in this case we get R1 by R2 is equal to R3 by R4. This is the case of balance condition of a Wheatstone's bridge. As simple as that guys. So what we do is that we simply just change the value of this resistance until we obtain no deflection at the galvanometer. When we obtain no deflection at the galvanometer that is when we say that we have obtained a balanced condition. That is no current passes through this galvanometer or uh, the potential difference across this galvanometer is zero. And in such kind of a case we say that a balanced condition has been obtained and this is the condition for a balanced condition. That is R1 by R2 is equal to R3 by R4 and by this since we know the value of R1, R3 and R2 we can simply just find the value of R4 using this particular equation as simple as that. So this thus is how we can calculate the value of an unknown resistance using a Wheatstone bridge. As simple as that guys, there is nothing more to it. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of how you can calculate the value of a resistance using a Wheatstone's bridge. And if you did find this video informative, do hit the like button and join our community by hitting the subscribe button. So we will be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.